Hey, everybody, it's the coach, and this is Monday Night Football on EA Sports. Coming up, we've got a good one on tap between the Mexico City Golden Eagles and the San Antonio Express. I'll be back at halftime to look at some of these stats and scores from Sunday's action. But for now, it's Monday Night Football. And to call the action, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Mexico City Golden Eagles and the San Antonio Express. Hi again, everyone. Brandon Gordon along with Charles Davis. And, Charles, we take a look at this San Antonio team as they interplay. They were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. Meanwhile, from Mexico City, our visitors. It's late in the year. We all know it. We've seen the calendar for these guys. Their bodies could probably use a break, but they have to push on. And they're really not as worried about that as maybe we think. They know they've got the entire offseason to rest. All they care about is the game in front of them and finishing strong. The bye weeks are over. It's all about football all the time as we're underway here in week 13. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And their quarterback, well, everyone knows he's got height standing at 6'6". It's pretty much become the norm when we see guys come out before a game and go through the route tree with their receivers. I thought it was exciting for us to see the exact same thing happen in practice. He's, not, so, he's so meticulous, isn't he? He really is, and it's not. that tells me it's not just a one-time-a-week thing. They work on it all the time, trying to hone that fine edge. They want to see if they can get in. And he'll give it here to his running back. Call it officially a loss of two Wait, on the first go. play from scrimmage. Second down. A tackle for loss there. Two last week. He's tough to handle coming off the edge. And when you talk about a defensive end, your first thought is, how does he rush the passer? That's where he makes his big plays getting into the backfield. But the best ones can play the run as well. And that's what we're seeing from him, that excellent combination of holding the point of attack and also getting upfield to make plays in the backfield. Looking to throw on second down. Hagan, rush coming, and he's taken down. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Back to throw. Hagan. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll get it up here this time to the 21. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. Ran the perfect defense in this situation. Would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. Fielded at about the 28. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. So now we'll get a look at the other offensive unit as they come out for their first possession. And a glance here at the man calling the plays under center, their 6'4 quarterback. 
What I enjoyed this week is that you were asked to talk to his offensive center before the game and find out a little bit more about him and what the relationship is. And that was a pretty positive story, wasn't it? Yeah, and really what I took away from that is just how it has permeated throughout the entire offensive line, the relationship they've had. It's really a group that's insane. They care about him. That's the thing. They really care. And when you care that much, you're going to play that much harder for him and give him a better chance to lead the team to wins. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around and make a play on the football. So again from the 39, this time from the other side of the field. Here's first and 10. Operating from the gun. Martino completes it to Austin. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 12 yards as they get to reset the sticks. On first down, Martino looking for the end zone. And this is going to be intercepted. Snags it for the pick. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Ah, Brandon, this is a veteran quarterback back there. He should know better than to make a throw like this. This is definitely not his best ball. And I think he knew this was trouble the second it was leaving his hand. So here are visitors to take over on offense. And the last drive, their first drive, three and out. What changes here, if anything? I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball, the biggest playmakers you have, that they touch it on this possession to try and get things moving. So get it to the horses. Without a doubt. They're the ones that typically end up in the end zone. An opening there on that first down run as he gets this forward for about eight or nine. That looks to be eight officially, so second and two. Off play action. Hagan. That's the receivers have split the down. And with a flag down, he goes down. So they're able to sack him. Now the penalty looks like it could be holding. Let's find out. So they will take the sack instead of the penalty. And it takes another down off the series. But the biggest one of all, do you want to tell the guy who just got the sack that it no longer counts? No. No, not at all. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And they will rally and stop him short of the first down. They get him to the ground at the 26. Well, the good thing about covering any game I do with you is I know that there's no problem with rhythm. Now, what we're watching offensively, a little bit of a problem there. Yeah, punt on the first drive, looking at another one here. Just a little slow. And, you know, they, they were talking about a fast start, but that hasn't been the case. Yeah, and let's face it. Any team we cover always talks about a That's fast true. start. That's true. But it's not necessarily going to happen just because they say so and whether it's the script whether it's you know just what they're going through whether they're seeing different defenses they're gonna have to figure it out as this game moves on so here is the home side to take over on offense that opening drive ended with the int it didn't lead to points but still not the way they were hoping to begin the game but how about going and telling your defense thank you a huge thank you you said it didn't lead to points stalled off that drive now they've got a chance to redeem themselves and maybe reward their defense a little bit I put some points on the board on this one. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Off the play fake, Martino. And this will be broken up and incomplete. Now a penalty flag down. And they may be going backward here. So that one a hold right guard. And you understand why offensive and defensive linemen probably go to martial arts schools and work on their hands so often because that can be the make or break difference on a play. This time he had to grab a jersey in order to make the play happen. Got caught for the penalty. And a look at the offense that is hoping to put some points up in bunches here in this one. Ready? Ten over. I hope you brought your left because I'm about to take you to school. Let's go. To throw on third down. Martino. Oh, he's got a man wide open. Complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 
17 yards on the pickup, and it'll give him a first down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Looking to throw, Martino. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. Time for a look at our starters here on defense. And they've shown the ability to play tough against the pass. Currently ranked number nine in the NFL. Yeah, defending the pass hasn't been an issue for them. It's been stopping the run. And if they don't stop the run, they can't get back to their strength, which is guarding against the air attack. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. To throw again, Martino. And a quick throw here, that's complete. Now whistles here, and we've got a man down. Man down on the field. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. The last catch did get three, but they're still go, left needing defense. seven yards on Let's third go, down. Now. From the gun, Martino. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. That's what I'm talking about. Sacks all day, baby. Two sacks Go last week. Back. Another one you right here. He's been unblockable lately, and I think that goes all the way back to not just his offseason, but the film study he's been doing during the week because I think he's found matchups that he likes, and he's capitalizing. And a few times, he's even defeated double teams. He doesn't care at this point. So they bring out their punter as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. And the win last week punted four times as this one's away. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the offense will take over with a new set of downs. So here are our visitors to take over on offense. They've had it twice. They punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice. So they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? Now they try the right side here. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. They tried to run the counter, just that the defense wasn't fooled. And when they're not fooled, you see the end result. Because what you're doing there, you mentioned the counter. You're using your offensive linemen sometimes to pull or move to influence the defensive front to go in that direction and create the space back in the other side and block it appropriately. But you're exactly right. Didn't move him. Sat there waiting for him and made the play. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. And this passing game's whole offense really didn't show up in the loss last week, and it hasn't started all that great here either. Yeah, and they can't let that incompletion become an uh-oh moment. Like, oh boy, here we go again, just like last week. Each game is its own entity, treated as such. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. So here is the home side to take over on offense. And things haven't started so well for this side. Two drives, two punts. So now you've got to start looking not just at play calling, but which guy's going to step forward and say, okay, let's get this thing done. Because within that unit of 11, sometimes one guy can make a big-time play and break through the barrier. They'll run on first down. Newell. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that'll make this a second and 13. But we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. A three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. Defense, defense. Operating from the gun, Martino. And he whips that one incomplete there. Here we go, here we go. 
An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. From the gun, Martino. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. And he'll be stopped here well short of the first down at the 24-yard line. It's a gain of seven, and that's going to make it fourth down. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are, you know, make him make someone miss in the open field. On is the punt team now as this one sent away. And he spins through. So just a three-yard return following a punt of 45. So here are visitors to take over on offense. So far, they've had three drives, three punts. Not good. Not good indeed, because you've got to have something to show for being out on the field. Now, sometimes, if you have a game where neither side has scored, three punts isn't a bad thing. But when you're trying to set the pace, get up on top in a game, you've got to show better offense and find a way to put some points on the board. A good start to the drive here. That's caught out on the left side. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That's a good way to start the drive. 17 yards and a first down. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them, and they run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Back to throw. Hagan going right side here, and that's complete. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. And to give this time to the tailback. Defensively, a solid response after giving up back-to-back -back first downs. And here's the offense today that hopes to get off to a strong start. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. I'm coming after you. I'm coming after you. Now a handoff here to his running back. It's a four-yard pick up there, and it leaves him with third and five. A look now at our starting defense. They're a unit that enters play way down, number 28 in the NFL right now against the run. And the focus now is making sure that they're hitting on all cylinders as they head into the playoffs. And that means they've got to stop the run better because playoff football often means running football. So they've got to be prepared for that. From the gun on third down, Hagan. This is caught, and he will take it in for the touchdown. As his guys are in for six, as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. So on third and medium, they dial up the pass, and it works to hit the end zone. And it's really not a surprise to me. That's a throwing down in the NFL because of how tough it is to run the football. But what offenses like to do is still show run formations to make them respect it and throw out of those. In this case, they took a nice shot at the end zone and made it pay off. No problem there on the extra point. And that makes the score 7-0. So that drive spanned five plays. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And there is a flag as he's brought down right at the 25-yard line. But who's this going to be against? Defense. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it, that's going to be 15 yards. So the face mask, quite a blessing there as they'll start out of harm's way with a first and 10. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. 
He's obviously a bit of a shorter running back. Sometimes when he goes up the middle like that, he, he gets lost in there, and then he pops out for 10, 20 yards. I actually asked NFL linebackers if that was true. Do you actually lose sight of some of the smaller running backs? And all of them confirmed that that can be a problem. Think of it this way. Two of the top running backs in NFL history, Emmitt Smith, Barry Sanders, both 5'10". And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they'll get this just to the 47. One-yard gain. They'll need to get this to the 38. That's where the first down marker is here on third. Looking to throw. Martino. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And they bring their punter out there now as he's on to kick it away. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. Out of bounds as he appeared to be looking for the corner. He got it. They're going to mark this at the four-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he gets this up just shy of the 15. Try to escape the shadow of their goalpost. That helped. 10 yards. First down. After one, 7 0 on EA Sports. First and 10, Hagan. And that'll wind up incomplete. Try to give his man room to run under it, but it's second down. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Now they'll run on the draw. And a nice gain there as he'll be taken down just shy of the 20. The offense on third down tonight. They've only converted once in four tries. This will be third and five. Ball start offense. Let's go now. Yeah, maybe they were coming with a blitz that time and it caused a jump. I think if we saw it, you know that they saw it. Might have been a little discussion down there. Bad guys coming. Pick them up. Pick them up. And someone jumped. Yeah, it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he's going to be stopped well short of what he needed as the tackle is made at the 18-yard line. Give him three on the play, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Well, the coverage was tight that time. They allowed the pass underneath to him, but they rallied to him pretty fast, too. Converged on him and got him down. That'll bring up fourth down. Now on now is the punter, standing right on his own five-yard line. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. So here's the home side to take over on offense. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. A first down run, not going to get him a whole lot. Maybe a yard. Yeah, it looks like just one yard there. So that'll bring up second and nine. They run the counter. Kendall. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. That's going to go down as a loss of five, and it brings up third down. Another example right there how this defense really is winning the entire game at the point of attack. Yeah, right there at the line of scrimmage because they are dominating. It allows their interior guys to get upfield and spill into the backfield. So how are you going to combat that? You know, because they bring in your tight end, keep him in, your running backs, they have to step forward. Bottom line, your offensive line has to block them first to give yourself a chance. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. 
Brandon, what I remember most about playing with guys who knew how to rush the passer, they would just tell you, just cover people for me, just long enough for me to get there. And that's exactly what happened on that play. Team on now as this one sent away. So here are visitors to take over on offense. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. Yeah. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense. Get a couple of first downs and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. I don't know what this says about me, but I love successful runs up the middle when the blocking is so well executed like that. And it doesn't matter whether it's zone blocking, whether it's a power scheme, when you have a blocker on a defender and then the running back can read it, find the proper hole and just go, it's sometimes a thing of beauty. Running game working, they'll stick with it on first down. And down to the 44, five yards that time. To throw on second down. Hagan firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 11 yards there, first down. Throwing on first down. Hagan, it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. A gain of six there on first. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Now they'll run it on the toss, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go down as a loss of five, and it brings up third down. The way he roared up and made that play, that tells me that he spent a lot of time in the film room analyzing what this offense does, and he saw something that convinced him he didn't have to worry about the pass. He could just go right now and make a play. I think if you're the offensive team, you better file that away a little bit. Maybe think about some play action down the road. You might catch him deep. Back to throw. Hagan, and he's got it. Got his man on the end route. Complete. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. 17 yards on the pick up there and also a first down. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs, hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. And to give this time to the tailback. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Now a handoff here to his running back. And yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And they're able to corral him right around the eight, and that's short of the first down. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. Now on fourth down, out comes the field goal unit here. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. And this one is right through. And the lead moves to 10 zip. That drive took him inside the 10. Good job defensively to hold him to three. Yeah, I like how you did that. Give a little tip of the cap to the stop troops there because they didn't give up a touchdown in that situation, right? Made them kick the field goal. And yeah, points went against them, but that feels a whole lot better running off the field. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. 
So here is the home side to take over on offense. And still no points on the scoreboard. You're coming off of the three and out. They're just looking for anything to grab onto right now, aren't they? I'm wondering if someone's going to take charge in the huddle. You know, we always look at look to the quarterback, but sometimes it's another player on the team, a star, a veteran, someone with some excitement and energy. It's like, all right, guys, let's shake things up and let's go because they still have an opportunity to make things happen. Shake it off. Now a throw over the middle, and he's got it to start the drive. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. First play of the drive going for 14 and a first down. On first down, Newell. And he'll only get a yard, maybe two, up to the 46. On second down, Kendall. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Looking to throw. Martino throwing left side. It's complete. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Well, we always hear about the connections some quarterbacks have with certain receivers. I think this guy has a connection with just about everyone. Didn't mind throwing it in there against double coverage to him. Shows some confidence, supreme confidence. Big time confidence that he would make the play for him, and he did. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Get it. Get it. Off play action. Martino. And the seven yard line, the catch is made. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the ten to the seven. That one goes for 30 yards for an offense that has not found the end zone yet. That's a big play. There's the spark right there. The big play that they needed. Now they've got to go ahead and finish this drive and put this ball in the end zone. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Operating from the gun. Martino. This will be caught at about the six. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Nice job defensively to hold him to four, and now it's second and goal. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that, but it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter as a good running back dive play. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Tight down, tight down. There you go. Mike Fox. Deep rip. They'll try to run this one in. And he's going to get this back to the three-yard line and no further. It'll go as no gain on the play, and now they're looking at a third and goal. On third down, Newell. No gain on the play that time, so a big stop, and it's going to leave him with a fourth and goal. Fourth down, so Pat Shermer trots out the field goal unit. We've hit the two-minute mark of the first half. 10-0, our score. A reminder coming up just a few minutes from now, we'll send you to Jonathan Coachman and our crew in Orlando. Coach will have a look back at some of the stats and scores from yesterday's action. A good drive gets him inside the five, but they could not punch it in. And credit the defense, too. Make sure that that happens because that was the old bend but don't break approach. Made sure they contained them when they absolutely had to and forced the field goal attempt that went through. This is taken at his four. And nice work on the return as he'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. So here are visitors to take over on offense. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points yeah, on the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Back to throw. Hagan. Is this intercepted? It is. It's intercepted. 
picked off near the 34. Oh, man, Brandon, not a real good throw that time. It looked like he tried to put a little too much air under this one, and it turned into a floater. And defensively, this is a dream. He could have fair caught that one. That was way too easy. So here is the home side to take over on offense. It was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. You got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You can never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you, try and score when given the opportunity. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. Throwing again. Martino, he's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 17 yards on the catch and run. It's a first down. And this is why trying to cover the angle route. And he's going to be swallowed up. Sacked back at the 45-yard line. Now the offense going to use the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Second and long. It's been my observation has been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. And they'll send out their punter now as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And this will be out of bounds, and they spot it at the 15-yard the line. Not too bad. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. We're in the second quarter. They've got the lead. The lead, though, not so much because of the ground game, because of their air attack, Charles. So what they're seeing so far is the possibility of things loosening up later in the ground game. Through the air first. Maybe they have to start respecting that even more as the game goes on. And then there will be running lanes to find later. Yeah, try to get him more involved here on this drive, maybe. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Let's make these babies cry all the way back home, y'all. Looking to throw on second down. Hagan. Yeah, it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Now a second timeout called for by the defense as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. And they're left looking at third and eight after the second down pass play only went for two. Looking to throw, Hagan. And this is gonna be incomplete. One of the best routes, one of the favorite routes of any play caller. He just ran now a nice little angle route. That's supposed to be a catch, and usually it is, and running back dropped it. Yeah, I mean, he's a running back, but he's got hands. He should have caught it. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And out will come the offense as they take over. Here comes a field general leading his offense back out there for the next possession. And I guess the question, Charles, is what's the formula for keeping him better protected? Because as we see, the protection, it's struggle. And normally what you get is renewed determination. When, when, when the big guy gets hit, that usually sparks people. Hey, we can't let this happen anymore. They take it personally. He's not supposed to be on the ground, but that hasn't been the case so far in this game. So maybe they've got to figure out how do they get rid of the ball faster to help out the offensive line so he doesn't get hit as much. And we'll see if they can keep him off the ground now going forward. Off the play fake, Martino. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Well, let's see who this is on. So they saw the contact before the ball arrived. Penalty flag for pass interference. And trying to avoid pass interference is so difficult. You're trying to slow down these skilled receivers, and somehow, some way, they make plays on the football, and sometimes you're there too soon. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Wide open receiver complete. And he'll be brought down on 
that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it indeed. Here come the flags. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. Well, now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Ready, ready. From the gun, Martino. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. They can't stop us. They cannot hold us down. We're going to keep getting sex. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. We'll get back to you and Charles in a minute. But first, time to give the folks at home a look at what's going on around the NFL. From there, let's head off and check out a second game. And it was the visiting LA Rams who get the victory in that one. Alvin Kamara, over 100 yards on the afternoon thus far with a touchdown run as well. Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a defensive struggle. Which offense can break through in the second half? To find out, let's hand it over to our broadcast team of Brandon Gotten and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. This is fielded a couple yards deep. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. So here is the home side to take over on offense. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up. And we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Back to the air on second down. Martino. And he comes back with one complete. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. 11 yards there. First down. They'll run on first down. Newell. And they're able to swarm him behind the line, and his rough night continues. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time, and a first down. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Come on, set, 70, Indy. On first down, Kendall. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Yikes, a four-yard loss really sets him back now for second down. Well, we've seen this a few times in this game. That offensive line just, I don't know if you want to call it out physical, out toughed, whatever you want to use. And what people do when that is happening, when they're getting dominated that way, they spread things out a little bit, make it more of a space game and allow your skill position players to make a few plays out in open field, take away the physical element, gives you a chance. It'll be a five-yard pickup there, so from second and 13, they're back to a more manageable third and eight. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Looking for his running back, and he's got it. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. So that one will be accepted. Automatic first down.
And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight. Second and two. 52 is the mark for 52. Second and two. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. My man, it's been a rough night for that offensive line, and it's only getting rougher. Five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far. It feels like the witching hour out here, doesn't it? Okay, stupid question. What's the witching, witching hour? Yeah, the witching hour. That's when everything goes haywire late at night. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Operating from the gun, Martino. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll be brought down, it looks like right at the 40. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game, but why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. A throw left side to start the drive is complete. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two. And it brings up second down. From the 22, here's second and eight. And he'll give it here to his running back. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. Not what you wanted there, third and two. And this is something you've worked on in practice from the time you were in training camp, yet you still create your own mistakes. Back to throw. Hagan. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. Sometimes the most effective routes are the ones that you run in the backyard, and you probably ran them when you were five years old. How about a little curl there against zone? But the key to it is finding the open spots in the zone, how a linebacker or a defensive back will widen to give you space. Find that area, let your quarterback hit you. This is taken at the 15. A nice job on the return there, 16 yards. And possession will switch, hands first and 10. So here is the home side to take over on offense. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. On second down now. Kendall, and that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. He lost two there, and it's third down. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. 
These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Looking to throw. Martino, and that will be incomplete. Well, we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. So they bring out their punter as he's on here to punt it away. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line, absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five, superb. So here are visitors to take over on offense. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. They're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. And to give this time to the tailback. And he'll find some room to get this up to about the 14. Eight yards on the run there, and that leads him with third and just a couple. On third and two, Hagan, and tight coverage there. It's knocked away, incomplete. So it looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. So a change of possession here on the punt. So here is the home side to take over on offense. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Back to throw, Martino. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. A pickup of five that time and a first down. As you know, so many things in the passing game are based on yardage. Sometimes it's just based on timing, and that's what we saw right there on that play. Third and three, just get the ball right to the receiver. This is the hitch route. And tell us, what is the hitch route? Yeah, just take really one step, like you're driving off the line of scrimmage, get the defensive back on his heels, get the ball out to the receiver, and he does the rest. Ball start, offense. Oh, jumping early from his tight end spot. Maybe trying to get a jump start on that route. Yeah, I think you're exactly right about that. And oftentimes when you see that, that means the play call was supposed to come in his direction, and he was eager to go catch a pass. Oh, man, it's caught at the six-yard line. And he's able to get this way down deep into enemy territory. Excellent execution, and now they're set up nicely. Are they ever? Red zone? I wonder what the next play call is going to be because after a big play like that, a lot of teams like to use the momentum to launch another one. Ready? Two stop. Check, 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 check. Check, check, check. Now. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he is into the end zone for a touchdown. A great play there. 
with touchdown number seven on the year. As they are an extra point away now from tying this football game. Nice job of polishing off that drive, but all the credit there goes to that play prior. Yeah, it certainly does, because after that big play, I think resistance almost felt futile at that point, didn't it? And the very next play, they come right back, quick, fast, and in a hurry, and put it in the end zone. The extra point splits the uprights, and we are even at 10 apiece. now at 10 apiece as the kicks away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Now we get a peek at the captain of this offense heading back out there. He's played well. Good first half. He's continued that here in the third quarter. But my question, when you're a head coach, what do you look at stat line-wise for your court? Do you go right to turnovers? You really do. As much as coaches don't want to talk about that, that's where it starts. And when I played in college, our first rule for every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. And that's kind of how they judge you. Do you take care of the ball, not turn it over, keep it in the proper hands, and give your team a chance to win? Well, that's what he's done here in this one so far. A full five-yard loss that time. It's going to make second down pretty tough. Five. They'll run it now out of the gun. And the big boys up front, they're going to stop him right at the line. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. Looking to throw. Hagan. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And a pretty nice tackle there. Ranging up from his free safety spot as he'll stop him about a yard short. Well, it looks like they got what they wanted. They got the completion, but they weren't able to break any tackles or gain nearly enough yardage to pick up the first down. Now to be fourth and short. on the punt there and the offense will come back out deep in their own territory so here is the home side to take over on offense the last possession these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown and now they'll have a chance to move out in front yeah let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back the special teams went out there handled things they've got it they've got momentum i know they're eager to get out there and put it on display First down, Martino. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. And he'll get it up here this time to the 21. Gets seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It'll be a loss of one. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. It's real easy to say this running game needs to be better, but the reality is they've been given little time to actually find a place to run the football. It's almost like the defense is there on the handoff. Let's go. 15, run it. 59. Back to 59. Watch the run. Watch the run. Watch the run. Let's go. From the gun on third down, Martino. He finds his man. It's Austin. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. That's a pretty good throw on the curl route there. Third down, and they pick up a first. Defense should be aware for that, right? Yeah, they should be aware, but it's so hard sometimes. Yeah, it's not cause, easy. Because <laughs> when, they, when they sell that route really well, you think they're going upfield, then they curl back, show their numbers to the quarterback, on, and six, complete the play. Check right, check right. 
so the false start will back them up five. False start, offense. Maybe anticipating a blitz, and they jumped. Yeah, and if we saw it, you know that they saw it. The bad guys might have been coming on that play. They had to pick them up, and they jumped. They will get four yards here on the first down run, and that'll make it second and six. On second down, Kendall. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. is going to do it for this third quarter of action. And that'll do it for the end of the second quarter. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Ready, ready. Check, 59, 59. Watch the run, watch the run. Right up. Throwing on third and long. Martino, a bullet throw, but incomplete. Got to give credit to both defenses because they've been able to keep the points down. And despite that incompletion, I like the way he's playing. He's putting up decent numbers. What he has to do, find a way to make that sound read and hit that one home run before this one's over. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. This will be fielded at the 17. A 46-yard punt, eight yards on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. So here are visitors to take over on offense. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with them punting the football away. Yes, yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Face mask, defense. And a big face mask penalty here, 15 yards. You never want to get your hands up in the face mask area because your fingers can get tangled up there, and that can hurt you as a player. Now it's first and 10, a big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. And he'll give it here to his running back. Despite the heavy running, he'll be hit and drop shy of the 45. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. So a loss of five, and it'll be second down. Now after the false start, here's second and seven. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. And his throw is incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. This will be a two-yard loss on the play, and that's going to lead to a third and 12. They completed the screen on the perimeter, but boy, that was textbook defense, exactly as you're taught to play against a wide receiver screen, and they snuffed it out for a loss of yardage. The offense on third down tonight, they've converted just twice and have had plenty of opportunities. This is third down and 12. From the gun, Hagan. And that is incomplete. They went with the dive look that time on defense, just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. And it's out of bounds. Now we'll see what the side judge says. He says out at the eight-yard line. Out 
comes this field general once more leading his offense back onto the field. What can they do now, Charles, to make sure this highlight montage doesn't continue to show more pressure and pressure and pressure? You feel like it always comes back to leverage, don't you? Who is going to win that battle with offensive and defensive lines? Low man wins, we talk about that, but we think about it in a running game. But guess what? Same thing happens when you're trying to pass protect. Are you low? Are you balanced? Are you in a position where the pass rush won't bowl you over on their way back to the quarterback? They've got to reestablish that in order to try and keep their man upright. They have been bowled over a lot so far in this one. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. They have the incomplete pass on second down. Now they need a big play here, third and ten. Operating from the gun, Martino. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. He's having a nice game through the air. His decision-making's been really good, solid there again, just seeing nothing downfield goes underneath. Nice game. How about the patience? Because when you're having a big game through the air, you're looking for those chunk plays, those big ones downfield. Instead, as you noted, takes the check down, dumps it off, gains good yardage anyway. Really well executed. So possession goes over here on the punt. So here are visitors to take over on offense. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. They'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that'll bring up a second and 11. That was Shades of Tennessee Volunteer Football back in the 80s with Charles Davis coming up from the secondary to make the tackle for a loss. You mean my teammates doing that, right? <laughs> because they would tell you, my coach would say, where is that tape? I want to see that. But how about the complete package there? Not just playing the pass, but being a willing tackler and making a really nice play. Now this one complete downfield on the left side. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. Such a valuable commodity to have a tight end who can run and get open. How about what he just did there? Worked his way from right to left across the field and found his way free. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Off play action, Hagan. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. To throw again, Hagan. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Going to give this time to the tailback. And he'll take this one down near the 15. Credited with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. First offense. The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. I know they've got to be careful not to go to the well too often, but it's a fine line, isn't it? Because sometimes, if you've got success, you want to just keep pounding away. But no success there. They rallied quickly on the defensive end. Go now. 50, plant. Don't cut. Get go. Throwing on third and long. Hagan, quick hitter here. It's complete. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. 
Just a five-yard pickup, but it leads to fourth down. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. And his kick is indeed good. And they will take the lead at 13-10. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? Field it about a yard deep. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. So here is the home side to take over on offense. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake go, things go. up a little bit to try and get this Take offense yourself. moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> go to so something well, else. and maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Back to throw. Martino. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Well, there have been a ton of sacks. They were just trying to prevent another. So what you're telling me is the conventional way has not really worked for them, huh? Not at all. Not at all. So he tries to grab him here, and they still get caught. Now this throw caught left side. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And now whistles here and a flag down. Looked like someone got going a little early. Yeah, that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. A false start penalty, and now they're back to needing 10 yards on second down. Looking to throw. Martino. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. A gain of 13. It's a first down. A great Monday night to wrap up the week in football. Two division rivals and a great finish ahead as we come up on first and ten. Now a handoff here to his running back. Looking for a seam but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage and that's it. Officially no gain on the play and it's second down. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. They'll run it now out of the gun. They stopped after only a yard, taking it down to the 14. On third down, Newell. And the tackle made at the 13. He is well short of the first. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it'll be fourth down. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. And the 10-year vet knocks it through the goalpost. And in the fourth quarter, this game is tied. Well, you talk about clutch. That one was right down Broadway, and this game's all even here in the fourth. Yeah, he didn't leave any doubt, did he? Good snap, good hold, dead center. Almost like a big-time golfer in a major, firing at a pin from the fairway, <laughs> trying to win the tournament going down the stretch. All square now at 13-all as he sends this one away. 
And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. So here are visitors to take over on offense. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive in with a kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. <laughs> They'll run it now out of the gun. And takes this one across the 35 to the 36, a gain of about four. This a big play for both sides. What will we see here? Third and four. Back to throw. Hagan. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Pressure can come from all over when you're plotting a defensive strategy. On that particular play, it just came from the outside. the punter he's been terrific so far that'll be a 48 yard punt one yard on the return so here is the home side to take over on offense Some pretty good games all weekend. We may have saved the best for last. This Monday night game has been a dandy. You gonna save me in your nightmare. They'll run on first down. Newell. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. Nice way to start the drive. A gain of 12 and a first down. Those are the types of runs they told us they want to see more of. Look, they'd love the 60 to 70 yard runs, but those 10 to 20 yarders, they can help you win a ball game. And that means everyone's invested because you know the big guys up front. That's what they do. They try and move people. But when you get your perimeter guys involved downfield, that means that they care about the running game and they know it helps their team. And yeah, the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. Throwing again. Martino finding his safety valve here. That's complete. All tied up. Less than two minutes to go. So it's our home team here in possession of the football as we come back. And they're facing a big third down now in this tie ball game. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. And whistles, and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. And they bring their punter out there now as he'll come on to kick this one away. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. So here are visitors to take over on offense and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not pump the ball again. And throwing here to start the drive as they connect left side. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Looking to throw. Hagan. Now you're right on the edge of field goal range. You've still got time, but get up to the line of scrimmage and get set. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. To throw again. Hagan. They'll tussle for it, and this is going to be caught. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense. The penalty moves him into the red zone here on first and ten. And he'll give it here to his running back. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Now the defense going to use the first of their timeouts. 
As he'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Going to give this time to the tailback. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. They're going to run the jet sweep on third down. But he has the first down before he's tackled at the five. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as it comes with exactly a minute to go in the football game. A game-winning field goal would be a chip shot from here. Let's see how they play it on first and goal. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. It's a gain of a couple, and it'll be second and goal. He'll try to run this one in. And he's going to get this back to the three-yard line and no further. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they'll stop him with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. They'll try to run this one in. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. He needed three, he got two. Now that'll set up an interesting situation here on fourth and a yard. Defense keeps him out of the end zone there. Now, will they go for it? And if so, can they do it one more time? Yeah, I just don't know if it's worth it going for it because what we've seen from the defense so far, every gap is taken care of. Everyone is sound in their coverage. No one is breaking free. And those ball carriers are getting tagged. If I were them, I'd think very hard about just taking three points and taking their dignity and moving on. And the ball's at the two, spotted at the two, so a pretty good chunk to go. He hasn't missed a kick all year. Why would he start now? <laughs> That's a great question, isn't it? Well, maybe because that was the most nerve-wracking kick he had to attempt all year, but he knocked it through just like it was an easy chip shot. This will be fielded at the six. Kick play. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still, you're wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. So for our visitors, the win gets them back to 500 at 6-6 six and six on the year. And they will head back home next week. Meanwhile, for the home team here, it was a win they needed to turn the season around, but instead, they fall to 5-7. and seven. And they'll try to get back to their winning ways next week as they head to Lambeau to take on the Packers. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, we thank our entire crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. This is the NFL on EA Sports.